In this movie, we're going to look at constructors and destructors. Constructors and destructors are special methods that automatically get called whenever an object is created or destroyed. So the idea is that whenever an object is created, stop while constructing it and perform the construct method. And whenever we're destroying an object, stop and do the destruct method as well. Let's go into depth on constructors first because they're far more useful. Constructors are going to be ideal for any initialization or housekeeping that an object may need before it's actually going to be used. Now in PHP 4, constructors were methods that had the same name as the class. Now of course we're not using PHP 4 here, but I want you to see it just so that you're familiar with it. And if you're looking at some old code, you'll recognize it and know that that's what it is. It has the exact same name, the class is table, so the function is called table. That's a constructor. Now they give it a better name in PHP 5, it is underscore, underscore, construct. And that's how we're going to name the constructor. And that is going to be the automatic method that will get performed whenever an instance of class table is created. Let's see how it works. I'm just going to open up TextMate and start a new window. And we'll do save as constructors. And even though we're going to talk about destructors, I'm going to go ahead and just call it constructors for now. PHP tags. So let's start with that class that we were just looking at, table class. So here we can see more clearly, it's underscore, underscore, construct. And this is our chance to do some housekeeping. So let's say, just as a really simple example, that we had a public attribute called legs on the table. Well, then we could say down here, well, this legs is equal to four. So whenever we instantiate a new table, it will have four legs. Let's try that out. Let's just say table equals new table, and then echo table and legs. And let's go ahead and just put our BR tag at the end. Let's bring that up in Firefox and try it out. Constructors. There we are. So this has the exact same effect, of course, as if we had put legs equals four. But imagine that we wanted to do something much more complex than that. Imagine that we maybe wanted to stop and check a database or that we wanted to do a little bit of research into the state of other classes and their static variables and things like that. In fact, I'll give you another real simple example that we can look at. Let's say that we had static public and then let's keep track of total tables as a static value. We'll set it to zero to start with. So now whenever we create a new table, let's increment that value. Table colon colon and total tables plus plus. So that's going to increment it every time we create a new instance. The class is going to keep track of how many total tables have been instantiated. Let's give that a whirl. Let's just come down here and I'll paste in a couple of usages of this so we can just see it. I'm just going to simply echo back the value, which should be zero here, and then I'm going to create a new table and then echo that value back, and then I'll create another new table and I'll echo the value one more time. So let's just try that. Oops, it came back. Actually, it was one here because we had already created a table back up here. So this will actually be one the first time. Again, this is a really simple example, but you can now see how we can begin to actually take care of some business each time one of these objects is created. And I'm not going to go into the full example, but if we had this as a subclass, let's say extends furniture, and then down in our construct method, we could refer to the parent method, construct parentheses. So now once we've done all of the construction that's involved with the table class, it will jump up to the furniture class to see if there's any constructing that needs to take place there. And we saw that parent scope resolution operator allows us to do that. But again, I'm not going to go ahead and fully implement that. I just wanted to point out that it was possible. The last point I want to make about constructors is that they also can take arguments. So for example, leg count, and I can say equals four, and then I'll just take leg count here and set it equal there. Now, notice that I have a default value for four. If I did not have that, then every time I create a table, I would need to pass in an argument here for five, six, so on. It's going to be expecting me to pass an argument just like I would to a function. I'm going to pass it into those parentheses that are after the class name. And that's why those parentheses are there. In case you were wondering, it's what we're passing into the construct method. It's always a really good idea to give a default value there just so that if you ever do create a table without one, that it doesn't give you an error. And it doesn't say, hey, wait a minute, I was expecting an argument and I got nothing. So even if the argument is null or zero or something like that, 
go ahead and give it some default to fall back to for constructors. Now, constructors are going to be really useful, powerful tools. Destructors, not as much. Here's what it looks like. It's underscore, underscore, destruct, and then two parentheses, just the same. And then we could have it do something. I've had it say total tables minus minus. Now, the reason why it's not that useful is because most of the time we just let our objects stick around that we've instantiated through the entire request. So the user hits a page, it goes, it creates all the objects it needs, it generates the page to the user, and then PHP destroys everything. It doesn't hang on to those objects. It doesn't keep them around. They all get destroyed. And the destruct method does get called then, but it kind of doesn't matter at that point because it's unloading everything, including the value of total tables. So why bother going through and decrementing each of those? The one time it is useful is that you can call it directly if you're going to destroy an instance. So that's why it's there. It's not used that much. I would say it's used 1% as often as you're going to use constructors, but at least you know what it is. So spend a little bit of time playing with constructors until you get comfortable with them. In the next movie, we'll look at cloning objects.